Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee Flying Farmer. We're on day 13 of the build challenge. Uh, today I'm kind of stepping back and working on the doors again. I, I kind of got this one started pretty good a while back, but that's that's where I've kind of gone back to working on. Um, it is roughly one o'clock in the morning, so I'm not gonna get a whole lot more done out here, but I've, I've got started. Um, anyway, don't forget to stay after the main part of this video. I've got one big question that people are asking. I'll do a question and answer on it. And please like, subscribe, share the videos if you enjoy them. That, that helps a lot. And I really appreciate all you guys. So let's get started. This guy's good. Now, here's our farmer, John Humbred. Look at that. Oh my God. That was Whoa. good. The door frames and the door hinges are kind of what I'm working toward a little bit today. Um, this left side I've got mostly mostly done. It's at least roughly clicoed. It's a pretty simple, really. The Super Duty is different than the old style 701s because this one actually has a, a metal aluminum frame and the bubble window attaches to the frame where the old 701s have a fiberglass framed window and it's there's no metal to them at all. So... I'm, this is going to be a lot more rigid, and I don't know that it's really going to weigh any more, probably a little less, really, than what the the fiberglass is on the 701, so I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Um, one thing I'll point out, I've done the hinges a little different than what's in the plans. You can see that they're, they're turned in there this way instead of sitting flat on the surface. That's another one of my another one of my modifications. I, just, I guess I just like to do things different and do them my way, but... I'm not saying it's necessarily better, but I kind of like the aesthetics of it. And in between the little the little hinges and stuff, there's no air gap. So if you turn it the other way, you'll have a little bit of an air gap. Um, let me show you here. Basically, this is the piano hinge that, that comes with the kits. It's pretty, pretty simple, really. There's not much to these. Um, if it's turned flat, like the way it is in the instructions, the way most people do them, and I'll say there's really nothing wrong with that. Um, they go in there like this. I'm taking these same same type of hinges and I'm, I'm essentially folding them over and closing the gap like that. And the reason I'm, the main reason I'm doing this, like I say, it's aesthetics, but also when you hold these things up to the light, you can see that there's a, a pretty good amount of gap there in between the actual hinges. That air gap, when you turn it sideways, it's it's a lot cleaner there's there's essentially no gap there it, that eliminates the gap because it's all closed on each other you can't see any gap there but if it were turned the other way you'd be able to see some air gaps in there and that that leaves room for a little bit of airflow i had noticed that in my 701 and of course you can seal it pretty easily with rubber and that kind of stuff but i wanted a cleaner cleaner look from the get-go and a tighter fit from the get-go so that's what i'm doing um anyway this left door is pretty much complete, not totally, but it's getting really close. So I already had the door seal and part of the hinge on the right side of this, and I'd already bored the holes in it for the, the Clecos. Um, one thing I have to do to kind of get forward on the rest of it, I basically have to put a sacrificial rivet in there in the front and back so I can hold that because when I, when I close the hinge over on itself, you can't have a Cleco in there and be able to have that work. So I had to put a like I said, it'll be sacrificial because I'll take all this back apart and clean it up real good and deburr it and all that kind of stuff and probably probably do a little bit of paint work or something before I finally assemble that. Anyway, I'm kind of working on trying to trim this stuff down, get it all fit up. And it's coming pretty good. Like I said, it's, it's small steps. It's been a, a busy day and I'm not going to get super far tonight because like I said, it's already getting late. Of course, while I'm sitting here working on this and trying to get some of this stuff fitted up, I'm still very much pondering on what we talked about yesterday with the cabin heat. I think I've, and that whole, the whole cabin heat plan is really evolving. I'm, I'm far enough along now that I'm, I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that I can make it work and do what I want it to do. And I think I can do it without having to penetrate through the firewall. So it's going to be, like I say, I'm not going to disclose a huge amount of that until I actually get it to where you can see it. But I'll I'll get to that a little bit further as time goes. I, I've got to do some stuff interior-wise to make it all work. With that being said, I'm going to make this a little bit shorter actual build video today. 
as always, I really appreciate everybody, the, all the feedback and the, the, the support, the moral, the calls, the messages, the everything you guys do. It's, it means a lot. Um, keep it coming. I'll try to keep this content coming for you. I, of course, after this 31-day challenge, I'm going to have to back on, off on the content just a little bit so I can actually get some work done on the plane instead of making videos. I'll, I'll, try, to, I'll, try, I'll try my best to still make this a, at least a once a week thing give you guys a weekly update or something like that but um I'm, i've got so many ideas that i want to implement on this thing it's going to take time so i'm going to have to get back on the build here pretty soon anyway thanks again thank you for watching and i'll catch you tomorrow <laughs> all right today's question and answer this is a question probably one of my more common questions i get it's, it's been asked multiple times the question is, why did I build a short engine mount? Why did I go through that much hassle and modification? And why, why did I do it? Why, you know, it's, it's causing all this much issue now with me running out of space. What was my motive for, for doing the short engine mount? There are several layers to that answer. And the, really the first layer was that when I, when I got the kit and the planning on the engine and all that kind of stuff, there very simply was not an engine amount commercially available for this, this particular setup. Um, and, that prompted me into, cause the reality is I knew I wanted this turbo engine from the get go. I mean, as soon as I decided I wanted to build a super duty, right here's the engine I knew I wanted in it. So, um, I knew that was going to, I knew it was coming. I knew I was going to have to build one or I was going to have to wait on it to be built from a, a commercial standpoint. Uh, they are available now through UL power. You can go to the dealers and, and get, get the engine mount that hooks the UL directly to the Super Duty, so it's not, not an issue anymore. Um, and I'm not sure that I would recommend building one because it it's, it's turned into a major hassle. You know, it's a pretty good headache to build the actual engine mount. And then again, it's turning into a really a, a big time headache on trying to make everything fit. So that was number one. Uh, it just just it wasn't available and I knew I was going to have to do something so I thought well if I'm gonna have to do something anyway and this is the part two if I'm gonna have to do something anyway I want to be able to shift the center of gravity on this airplane back just a little bit while I'm building and the only the only really easy it's not even easy the only good way to do that is to shift this engine weight back a little bit so Essentially, I've made this engine mount six inches shorter than what's commercially available. It shifts the entire engine assembly back six inches. Uh, that moves the center of gravity back a, a considerable amount because that's a pretty good amount of weight on the airplane that you're shifting back. And there's really multiple reasons for me wanting to do that. It's, it's mostly a personal preference. These airplanes, they fly great with a more forward center of gravity. And I think most of them are actually built so that when they're empty, the, the center of gravity is usually toward the front end of that envelope. And as you load the airplane, it moves the center of gravity sort of toward the middle of the envelope. In my Super 701, I built it to where when the airplane was most aft loaded, it was really toward the back end of the envelope. And as you burn the fuel off or as you unloaded it, it that, that center of gravity moved back forward toward the center of the, the envelope that way. And it's worked great. I, I, I just love it. And, you know, it, people will tell you that for it to be a really good Stolops airplane, on, on these airplanes in particular, it's really good to have the center of gravity move back a little bit. Um, even all the Super Duties I know of, pretty much every one of them that fly them, they'll say, well, it flies better, it does better at Stoll if you have some weight in the back seat. You know, put 50, 75 pounds in the back seat, and the Stoll capability is much better. So... I wanted to offset that from the start with this one. And hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't limit my capacity of what I can do in the back seat. I've done lots and lots of figuring and there's, there's just not enough data yet. There's a bunch of Super Duties being built, but there's not enough data out there yet of flying Super Duties for me to get enough solid information that I can utilize for the 520T in combination with a Super Duty airframe and figure out exactly how my center of gravity is going to come out, especially when you start throwing in all the custom uh, center instrument pods and all the scalloping I'm doing for weight savings and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's impossible to totally figure that out on paper until you get it, you know, on scales, you're not going to know.
So like I said, fingers crossed it's gonna work really, really well and I'm gonna try my best to make it that way. Another reason I decided to make it a, a shorter engine mount is that I, I, again, this is another personal preference, but I really, I really like the visual of a short coupled airplane. And when you bring the engine back six inches, that really short couples the entire engine, cowl, everything. It just almost makes it a stub nose. I'll kind of show you what I mean here. The UL Power 520 series, the six cylinders in general, they basically all, they all use the same cylinder heads. On the six cylinders, there's three per side instead of two. So on the four cylinder, like I have on the, the Super 701, uh, basically you would eliminate that much of it. Um, you, you would just eliminate a set of cylinders and the block's a little bit shorter and all that stuff, but a lot of the internals are exact same. It's just you remove one set of cylinders on each side. So where I'm going with this, I've got my, with this being moved back six inches, it re, I, I want to show you how short couple it is. So I've got the top of the cowl off of the Super 701. You know, it's, it's the four cylinder. So the top of this cowl, if you just kind of hold it up here, it's really not, there's real, I don't think there's hardly any difference between the final length of this cowl being on the Super 701 with a four cylinder versus potentially using this top cowl, um, lengthwise anyway, on this one with the six cylinder. So that's kind of where I am with it. I just, I, I prefer a short coupled, short coupled look and I'm trying to make it all fit and work that way. Hopefully that answers some questions. Uh, please leave comments and ask me plenty of questions. I, I enjoy doing these segments, the questions and answers. A lot of things I don't know the answer to. If I don't, I don't care to tell you that I don't know. I'm, I'm not ashamed of saying I don't know. So, um, and I don't, honestly, I don't know if this is gonna work or not. This is, this is a project that I've got that it's kind of a trial and error. And a lot of my trial and error turns out to be a lot of error and a little bit of actual work. So. We'll see how this, this really comes together. Um, as always, I really appreciate you guys. It's getting up to a little after 2.30 in the morning now, and I have a busy day on the farm tomorrow. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you tomorrow. See ya.